Hey there, fellows. Now, I can't say that this is interesting and good news necessarily, but today we'll have to say goodbye to one of these engines. For some reason, I don't doubt that. As for why I think that's the case, well, someone sent us this video and, uh, well, yeah. Show you how to make a regular 130 horsepower Honda engine into something with at least 600. The point is, we'll be turning a four-stroke motor into an eight-stroke, an eight-stroke engine. Hey, if you want, let's try it out. Just for laughs. We'll swap over the gears on the cam and the crank. And try firing up the engine to see what happens. Right, let's do this. Okay, so the holiday season is over. But for our fan base, we want the holidays to continue. And so we've prepared some new gifts for you. Everybody who spends $100 or more in our shop is going to receive a special little surprise from me personally. It can either be a personal video message, or my autograph on a t-shirt or a hoodie, an autographed postcard or a surprise gift. Always in stock we have sick-looking hoodies, stylish hats, t-shirts, caps, mugs, stickers, key fobs, as well as accessories for your cars. Plus, we are always cooking up new merch ideas, so treat yourself or someone close to some Garage 54 goodness. Hit the link in the description, spend $100 or more, and get a nice little personalized bonus. Make sure to use the code GARAGE100, good for a solid discount. Okay, so we've brought the second engine back to life. It spent quite a long time outside, didn't it? Yeah, the ignition is definitely wonky. Well, it runs. Okay, fellas, so look here. We've given that treatment to the first motor. Now, you see, this engine is designed in such a way that you can't fit a big gear directly to the crank snout because of the castings. You've also got an oil pump in there, so yeah. And in order for us to invert the gears, here's what we had to do. We're actually using the factory gears that are meant to be there. The inverted gears we mounted via a few adapters. So now there is a small gear on the cam and a big one attached to the crank. Now with the big gear up top, all of these angles, let's just say they're very different. And as a result, we couldn't get proper tension on the belt. That's even despite us running a bigger gear on the opposite end. The angle is out of whack, and that was preventing us from being able to tension the belt to spec. Which meant we had to do some drilling. But at the end of the day we got there, the timing belt is nice and tight, it's all looking good. So this used to be a four-stroke engine, but now... Well, the camshaft is supposed to do one full rotation for every two rotations of the crank, so that's a full cycle. Now it's very much the other way around. For each rotation of the crank, the cam is going to do two. Go ahead and count how many strokes that is. All right, let's turn it over and see what happens. <laughs> what are you so worried about? I can move away if it makes you feel better. Look at it go! It was even firing.
Tu dove sei andato? Vai! Why doesn't it work? It's supposed to rev till like 15 grand at the very least. Hit it. Okay, so here's the story. We've got a lot of gas splashing from out the carby, which is par for the course, because the valves are opening like crazy. You know how this engine is lucky? It's lucky in that, why don't we convert the other one, with the timing chain? So we will see how it behaves, and draw some conclusions. Perhaps it'll be the lucky one. Let's check for spark. Less people complain that we didn't have it in the first place. Oh, that's enough to kill an elephant. That's enough. What's funny is that the fuel pump is driven by the cam. Let's turn it some more. <laughs> For a bit of fun. <laughs> we know that we have fuel supply, that we have spark. It's literally pouring from out of the carburetor. But isn't it supposed to get into the intake manifold and uh, not fly back out? <laughs> yeah, we can do a compression test. I don't see why not. We might even have a bit, who knows. <laughs> Let's do this. Zero, strangely enough. <laughs> yeah, let's try number two. Oh wow, this one actually has some. Almost three atmospheres. Not bad. Now let's try number three. Nil. Come on, keep going. If we kept going for another half hour, we could have gotten to a kilogram. <laughs> Though unlikely. Well, there is some semblance of compression present in cylinders 2 and 4. Something remotely reminiscent of such. So there's even some squeezing happening, what do you know? We're seeing some pretty lackluster results here. Why isn't this working? Isn't that amazing? So the camshaft spinning at four times the speed, and the valves opening in such a rapid-fire way has rendered the engine useless. Okay, let's put the belt back on the right way. I mean, it used to start right, and it still might be able to. Okay, everything is where it should be. Let's give this a try. It appears to be flooded with fuel. You see that? In stock form, in factory trim, works fine. There you go. Now that's a proper race car engine right there. Unlike that contraption we made for the secret races. Shut the damn thing off. На своем канале он разбирает невероятные трюки и проводит гонки на выживание. Даже Настя Евлеева была в шоке от такого напора адреналина. А вот ты хочешь стать частью экстремального шоу? Так вот, сегодня у тебя есть уникальная возможность выиграть мега призы. Подпишись на канал Мастер Панин, ссылка на канал в описании. Посмотри последний выпуск и напиши в комментарии свою самую экстремальную и необычную историю. И, конечно же, выиграй суперприз. В общем, список призов и ссылка на канал в описании. Let's do an 8 stroke 8 valve. We doing this? Time to work on the timing chain engine. Okay, we've got everything hooked up. It's all looking good. Let's go. Everything is right where it needs to be. It runs. Mm 
Now we can give it the same treatment. I mean, flip the gears. Fit the bigger one to the crankshaft, the smaller one to the camshaft. Come on, let's just do it. And destroy the engine, or at the very least the cylinder head. Okay, fellas, here's the situation with the chain engine. So in order to swap the gears over, we had to do some machining, some drilling, and quite a bit of brainstorming. Because the diameters work all right, but on the rear-wheel drive lot of engines, the snout on the crank is bigger than on the cam. That problem we solved with a few adapters. And so now... We've got the gears in the right respective positions. We've done all of the welding. Everything is where it's supposed to be with the piston at top dead center. Am I right? Of course I am. Supposedly we've created an engine that would dominate in any sort of rally. But before it does, we need to fire it up now, don't we? Fingers crossed. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, we've got everything fully assembled. What I love about these engines is that the ignition is like one wire. Well, all right, it's actually two. One of them is ground, the other is a positive. And that's all you need. Okay, are we ready? Are you ready? Okay, hit it. Pretty scary, eh? It almost even started. Let's go. Come on! Stop, dude! It's spewing a bunch of oil! Pretty much the same story as with the other engine, which coughed a bit... in the beginning. Can you put the valve cover on? To keep the oil from splashing. It started squirting from under the camshaft. You can just place it on there, for it to drip down. Okay, let's do this. Come on! Okay, it's still spitting at me. I'm afraid we might burn the place down. Why is it still spitting oil, though? I'd also like to know where them power gains are at. Okay, let's try that again. It seems to be raining gasoline. Did you see the flame? I sure did see the flame. You dropped something, dude. Okay, let's keep turning it. Come on, give us at least a cough. Doesn't want to. Spin it some more. Dude, it's already pouring out as is. There's a literal stream. It's shuffling the air back and forth for some reason. Here's the situation, fellas. It appears that we aren't really getting anywhere. This doesn't work, all the engine does is cough into misfire. So on a regular four-stroke engine, for every two crankshaft revolutions, the camshaft rotates once. That was our baseline. But when we swap the timing chain gears over, everything literally flips onto its head. So the crankshaft is making one full turn, while the cam is going for two. Now that's obviously going to result in the valves rattling way faster. Like, they're gonna open twice as often. Wait, is it two or... Four? Right, four times. Holy cow. 
After doing some simple maths, well, obviously there will never be any synchronicity. The coughing, that's a result of the mixture getting into the cylinder. So you get spark, it goes bang, but the bang can go either way, into the exhaust or the carburetor. It might be generating some power, but only as much as the starter motor is producing. <laughs> That's all the power you're gonna get, given the engine simply refuses to start. Where does this bring us then? It was obvious from the very start that this wouldn't work. There is no compression, and the timing is out of whack, with the valves pretty much constantly being open. You know what, let's do a compression test, just for the hell of it. That other one had no compression, as I'm sure you recall. Except for that tiny bit caused by humidity or whatever. Hit it. Oh, holy cow. It's coughing. How much is that? Three again? Zero. All right, we even have a tiny bit of compression in this one. One. Exactly one atmosphere? Yeah, look at that. This sort of compression is definitely good for... How much, like... 300 horsepower? Well, guys, you saw it all for yourselves. This sort of hack will do nothing for you. If the factory made the engine to work when assembled in a specific way, changing the configuration is definitely not going to yield any positive results. Okay, that's all I got for you. Watch us. Send in your suggestions, comment, subscribe, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.